we will introduce uh, Pierre uh, 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 Castaned, which is uh, deputy head of unit of the uh, DG Connect, and um, it's uh, the, the European Commission, and it's the highest uh, European Commission uh, you know, agency uh, you know, handling these issues of uh, um, uh, you know, uh, privacy and security. Thank you, Pierre. Okay, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's my pleasure being uh, with you this uh, morning, and thank you very much uh, for the EIT and RUFO for the organization of, uh, of today's event. Uh, you've really been mastering uh, trying to get to attract a uh, really top-notch speaker in the in the field of, uh, of cybersecurity. So thanks a lot for the organization. Uh, I will try to uh, present you a few ideas that we have uh, in the European Commission on how to secure uh, digital uh, technologies in, uh, in Europe. Uh, there are actually three ideas that uh, I would like uh, to come across uh, in, uh, in my speech uh, in the coming uh, minutes. The, the first thing is that uh, we do have a very strong cybersecurity industry in Europe. We tend to have uh, a very bad outlook at uh, European industry and always look at what is happening in the US, what is happening in Asia, what is happening in Israel. It's very good to, to benchmark, but we tend to have a very negative outlook at what we do in Europe. Actually, if we look at the cybersecurity uh, industry in Europe, is one field where we do have uh, competitiveness, where we do have uh, a number of global uh, actors that are capable to tap into global market and sell uh, competitive solution across uh, the world. This is also true for the uh, privacy uh, sector. Uh, actually, if we consider privacy uh, as, uh, as a subset of, uh, of cybersecurity, where we do have uh, a lot of innovation uh, happening in, uh, in Europe. The second thing is that uh, we have a uh, unique opportunity in the coming year uh, as we're going to transform uh, uh, critical infrastructure in Europe. Uh, this critical infrastructure will undertake digital transformation, electricity grid will turn into smart grid, transport system will turn into intelligent transport system, health system uh, will also uh, digitize. We have a unique opportunity to make sure that this digital transformation do happen in a secure manner. But we have to do this in, a, in an intel intelligent uh, way. So uh, uh, we have to avoid fragmentation uh, in this uh, digital transformation and ensure that we can get the right economies of scale uh, in order to uh, make best use of the investment funds that are at, at our disposal uh, to pursue this uh, digital transformation. The, the third element, uh, uh, and that echoes a couple elements that Andreas and uh, Michael have been uh, explaining, is uh, we do want uh, to keep adequate degree of technological autonomy uh, in Europe on certain aspects of, uh, of ICT. And I see this in, uh, in two respects. Uh, the first one is we have to acknowledge that in Europe we do not master anymore the entirety uh, of the complexity of uh, ICT value chain. However, what we have to uh, retain competency on is our capability to secure end-to-end -end, uh, the usage uh, of ICT uh, in Europe. Whatever kind of uh, tool system we integrate in Europe, we need to make sure that we are capable uh, of guaranteeing their security and their respect of uh, privacy obligation when they are being used uh, in Europe. The corollary of this is that although we may not master the entirety of uh, ICT value chain in Europe, however, there are a number of critical uh, technological building blocks uh, that for which we need to remain, uh, retain uh, capacity in manufacturing, in engineering, in designing uh, in Europe. And I think the uh, Excel joint undertaking is a very good example uh, of, uh, of a successful uh, aspect in this area where we're maintaining critical capacities in Europe uh, on some of these critical uh, technologies. So uh, let me try to take uh, again a bit more in detail this, uh, these different points uh, uh, with uh, more elements. So the, the first thing uh, is uh, on the state of play of the, of the ICT industry, uh, of the cybersecurity uh, industry in, uh, in Europe. Um, uh, currently, the, the cybersecurity industry in Europe is extremely fragmented. Uh, if you're asking uh, what are the key players in cybersecurity in Europe, I guess you can 
name half a dozen uh, companies, mostly large global players, uh, uh, were operating uh, across Europe, but also uh, across uh, the world. Um, uh, next to this, you have thousands of uh, SMEs, uh, most of which uh, uh, are tapping only into their domestic market. And they have really difficulties uh, into accessing other uh, European uh, markets for a very simple uh, re reason, which is trust. Uh, historically, a lot of these companies have developed uh, uh, because they accessed uh, governmental markets. They developed specific solutions for the uh, uh, national uh, government. And because of this, this creates a problem of trust. Well, if this guy has developed this cybersecurity solution for their government, uh, well, maybe there is a backdoor. Maybe there is uh, uh, a way to, uh, uh, to undertake surveillance with this system. So maybe I'm not going to procure uh, this system for uh, my own country, and I'd rather develop my own uh, industrial ecosystem in order to develop specific solution for my own needs. Uh, and that's more or less the way uh, the cybersecurity uh, industry in Europe has developed, be, uh, except for these uh, large global players I, I mentioned. So basically, one of the major uh, barriers that we have to overcome is trust, is simply trust. Um, the way we are thinking of um, uh, trying to overcome this, uh, uh, this barrier is try to have to foster cooperation among industrial actors in the upstream part of the, of the value chain. Downstream is too sensitive. We're f we want to focus on, on the upstream part. So we're going to try to uh, stimulate the competitiveness of the European uh, cybersecurity industry by injecting research and innovation funds for the cybersecurity industry in order to foster cooperation among the industrial actors, but also uh, with the adequate involvement and supervision of the member states uh, and of the national security uh, agencies. What we do hope is that this will enable to uh, foster uh, cooperation, stimulate innovation, but also over time create single solution or common solution or common architecture bricks that can be reused in uh, different uh, European countries. So for this purpose, uh, we have announced in the digital single market strategy earlier this year the launch of a cybersecurity public-private partnership that will be launched uh, in the first semester 2016. So that will be a contractual uh, public-private partnership, pretty similar to uh, other contractual uh, public-private partnership that we have launched in the area of robotics, big data, cla um, uh, 5G. Uh, so it will use the same uh, legal framework, but will focus on uh, cybersecurity and privacy uh, industry. Um, uh, we will therefore leverage uh, Horizon 2020 funds for this purpose. We do expect uh, something uh, around 300 million that will be invested uh, in cybersecurity research and innovation till uh, the end of 2020. Um, the second point uh, I wanted to um, address is the uh, dem demand uh, for uh, cybersecurity products and services. Uh, we've uh, been focusing so far on the supply side, uh, uh <coughs> but there is uh, a different perception. If you uh, address uh, the energy sector, the transport sector, uh, these people will have a very different perspective, but ultimately they are the ones that will uh, buy and implement uh, this solution. Uh, I was mentioning uh, digital transformation that uh, this critical infrastructure will undertake in the, in the coming years. Uh, this is a key element of European competitiveness. Uh, we do have very good infrastructure uh, in Europe. Uh, they are pretty stable for uh, many decades, uh, but uh, they are going to get through a major transformation in the, in the coming year by introducing uh, digital technology. This is the really next big wave uh, of possible productivity increase in, uh, in these sectors and also offering unprecedented services opportunities uh, in, uh, in these areas. However, as we're going to introduce digital technologies in electricity network, in water network, in transport system, in health system, in public administration, this creates huge vulnerability potential uh, for uh, what is Europe uh, known for, that is the quality of its uh, infrastructure. 
what we want uh, to do is to make sure that uh, these different application domains are going to create common requirements with respect to cybersecurity. We want to foster communities that are uh, sector specific, so vertical uh, uh, application domains, in order to understand what are the specific needs uh, in these uh, domains. We want to use uh, the cybersecurity public private partnership for this purpose in order to collect uh, these requirements and then uh, uh, get them to work with the cybersecurity uh, solution providers in order to develop common solution uh, for these uh, application domain. Our objective uh, ultimately is to have a common solution that work at European level. Most of this infrastructure are cross-border in Europe uh, by nature. Uh, they are essential for the good functioning of the, of the European market. Therefore, common solution that will enable to address uh, the cross-border nature of this infrastructure is absolutely essential. And this should lead uh, to the creation of a single market for cybersecurity products and services. Um, my last point is on um, uh, what some people call digital uh, sovereignty or technological uh, autonomy uh, in, uh, in Europe. Um, <coughs> this is uh, a pretty complex area and we have very little evidence actually uh, on what are the right uh, way to, to do this. Um, uh, there are some intuition around uh, it on what are the key technological building block on which we need to uh, keep investing. Um, but I think uh, one of the key uh, element that we need to pursue is mastering our capacity in Europe to secure uh, uh, digital uh, value chains. So even if we do not master individual technological uh, building blocks, we need to make sure that we do have the companies that are capable of integrating these different uh, technological building blocks in a secure manner and that are capable of verifying, guaranteeing, assuring uh, up to a certain degree uh, depending on the application domains, that uh, the system is eventually uh, secured. So there are a number of steps that need to be undertaken in order to uh, achieve this, and we see um, uh, three, actually, paths that we can pursue in, uh, in this area. Uh, the first one is, uh, is standardization. Uh, there is a big opportunity uh, in cybersecurity uh, standardization. It's pretty much um, uh, a virgin uh, area. Uh, but uh, there is also an important element which is making sure that uh, digital security requirements are properly taken into account in uh, mainstream uh, standardization. So uh, my uh, predecessor uh, colleagues mentioned uh, IoT, big data. These fields uh, have major standardization plans, but how is digital security addressed in these standardization plans? How is our privacy aspect addressed uh, in this standardization plan. I think it's very important uh, that we analyze uh, um, uh, the, the functional requirement uh, for digital security for these different uh, technological building blocks in their development. The second thing is that uh, after system development, how do you ensure that uh, the uh, system or the technological building block is uh, reaching adequate degree of, uh, of security? So first of all, it's uh, the demand side that needs to define what is the right level of, uh, of security that you need to get into a component that goes into a smart grid or into an EL uh, system. Uh, but we need to have uh, the right mechanism of verification and assurance uh, that this level of security are being met. Uh, I, I saw that uh, your metrics was very interesting for this purpose uh, in terms of uh, uh, positioning of public intervention and certification indeed seems like a very uh, good way uh, to, uh, to pursue uh, this to make sure that uh, critical elements that go in this critical infrastructure reach, uh, uh, go through certification process in order to guarantee a certain level of security. Uh, and the last thing, um, uh, looping back to my first point, first point on trust is maybe um, uh, the visibility of, uh, of this uh, assurance level. And for this purpose, uh, labeling might seem like a, a good idea to explore uh, further. Uh, we see that uh, individual initiatives uh, start taking place in a number of member states. Uh, France, UK, Germany uh, in particular have developed their own uh, digital security labeling scheme. Uh, but uh, that 
creates fragmentation. Uh, I mean, if you have a product that say IT security made in Germany and you try to go with this uh, in a different European country, what is the level of trust? Uh, when especially when it starts competing with a UK product or with a French product, who, who to trust? So um, building on this certification scheme, there could be the opportunity to see uh, how we could create uh, a European label for uh, cybersecurity and see the added value that this will bring uh, to both the supplier of security solution and to uh, the people that will eventually purchase uh, this solution. So these are uh, different ideas that we're currently uh, exploring uh, in the making uh, of uh, this public-private partnership on, uh, on cybersecurity. And we're looking forward to discussing with uh, different constituencies uh, how we can uh, integrate the different contribution of uh, industry, uh, member states, uh, and civil society into the uh, preparation of, uh, of this initiative. Thank you very much for your attention.